Always. We ask the question. What is the question the world? Generalni sekretar Svjetske carinske organizacije, dr. Kunio Mikurija, uskoplju je podržao digitalnu razmenu podataka biznis zajednice i carina u regionu, ali i globalno. Očekuje se da će istovremena digitalna razmena podataka i zajednička procena rizika doprineti ubrzanju trgovine i transporta na Zapadnom Balkanu. Dr. Mikurija je duže od 14 godina na čelu Svjetske carinske organizacije i njegov glavni cilj je promovisati globalne standarde koje će primenjivati svih 185 nacionalnih carina u svetu. Njegova poruka je da granice ograničavaju komunikaciju, a carine jačaju veze pa su ključne za saradnju i razvoj ekonomije. Kad je reč o šest zemalja Zapadnog Balkana, dr. Mikurija kaže da se treba formirati lokalno tržište koje će se povezati sa Evropskom unijom i ostalim velikim tržištima. Dr. Kunio Mikurija, thank you for joining us on Al Jazeera. What was the purpose of your visit to North Macedonia? Well, thank you for this opportunity. Um, this time it is uh, to promote uh, digital integration through digitalization of customs. And uh, all six Western Balkan countries uh, got together and uh, we had a very good uh, 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 opportunity of sharing experiences uh, and uh, um, best practices. And uh, um, also this time I used this opportunity to um, convene another Dijon workshop on how to address um, relief consignment in time of natural disaster or any uh, things that happen unexpectedly. So it is a very important uh, mission for me to visit uh, Skopje. Can you briefly explain the role and responsibilities of the World Customs Organization? Yes, the World Customs Organization, or WCO, was established 70 years ago. and. Uh, um, the purpose was to improve efficiency and effectiveness of customer administration because it is international intergovernmental organization. So uh, we set uh, global standards for custom procedures and uh, we promote cooperation, especially in terms of uh, um, well, fighting against uh, um, illicit trafficking or smuggling. And then we provide the capacity building support to our members. And uh, all in all, we have 185 members. And with that uh, network, we try to make sure that, uh, well, uh, things uh, move uh, cross border uh, smoothly. This year's motto of the World Customs Organization is nurturing the next generation, promoting a culture of knowledge sharing and professional pride in customs. Could you please elaborate more on this? Yes, um, well, I talked about uh, um, well, region, uh, global standards, so um, all customer administrations should uh, um, implement WCO standards uh, to have a harmonized uh, way and also um, use technology. Nowadays, uh, we are living in many IT technology or data analytics. So we need, to, we need to concentrate on human resources that have that capacity. And for that, uh, we try to attract more young, younger generation to join customs. And for them, uh, we should uh, make sure that uh, knowledge is shared, but also provide uh, something to feel a pride, professional pride in customs, because um, customs uh, uh, is involved in many uh, economic activities. Therefore, keeping integrity is very important. And for that, we need really professionalism and pride in well, serving the state and the region. The 20th century was the century of containers. The 21st century is the century of the small packages. In that way, has the customs role changed in recent years? Well, um, Custom role um, stays the same to uh, ensure the revenue collection and uh, um, facilitating trade and uh, um, protecting society from illicit trade. But uh, the way of operation should change because in the past, uh, um, container, uh, it, we know who is behind the container because it is professional trade people that deal with that. Whereas in the e-commerce, where they use small packages 
And uh, those uh, who are there, it's not uh, business to business, rather business to consumer. So consumer doesn't know how to comply with the custom procedures. And uh, also um, the e-commerce e uh, players uh, are not uh, new and they are not accustomed to the traditional trade. So we have to ask them uh, more information so that uh, we can get uh, pre-arrival electronic data to do our risk management to, to see whether it is good or not and to allow into country and uh, um, ensure that uh, uh, revenue is collected and uh, um, also protection of society is there. But uh, all in all, we would like to facilitate e-commerce small packages because this is a game changer for small and medium-sized enterprises and uh, consumers. But uh, for that, uh, we need to think about uh, applying the new methodologies of uh, custom clearance. So this is a challenge right now. How is the World Customs Organization supporting the green transition? What are the challenges and ways forward? Yes, um, now uh, green transition or greening the society and economic activities is a big agenda. And, uh, um, uh, well, it is not uh, complete in national domestic economy, but uh, those goods are going out, so trade should be included in that green transition. And uh, um, from that point of view, we try to uh, think about how to green supply chain and uh, how we can identify those goods which are greener or friendly to green and those uh, which are nearly hazardous to environment. And uh, um, uh, Custom has been already involved in um, implementing uh, um, uh, the conventions uh, on uh, environmental protection. Uh, for example, hazardous goods or ozone depleting substances. All those uh, goods, uh, we, uh, uh, ma we make sure at the borders uh, to uh, stop those ones and control ones. So uh, this is the area, how to make sure that we identify those goods uh, using WCO's harmonized system, tariff classification system, and also how to uh, control those goods at the borders by uh, sharing data with uh, other, well, for, for ex importing countries with exporting and transit countries to share information and uh, that cooperation is necessary. So this is the area that we are trying. But uh, um, challenge is that uh, I talked about data, but uh, um, trade data, uh, whether they are green or not, uh, it is very difficult to get that. And uh, at the borders, uh, not easy to identify whether those goods are hazardous waste or goods for recycling. So uh, this is the challenge that uh, we are looking at and how best we can well, improve um, customs methods. How well uh, do customs administrations cooperate digitally with the private sector? Well, um, digitalization, it first came at the, uh, from the private sector. And uh, now private sector traders are doing their business using, uh, um, well, digital, digitally, electronically. Uh, sometimes they use blockchain, the new technology, or rather disruptive technology. And uh, what custom does is uh, uh, that uh, um, custom wants to have access to commercial data, um, well, uh, preferably before the arrival of uh, goods, to see if those goods are fine, compliant with national regulation. It's not only customs, but uh, all um, government agencies have some uh, controlling uh, um, regulations at borders, and it is customs that implement those regulations. So uh, by getting, uh, uh, having access to that data and uh, try to do risk management is nowadays customs major work. Uh, of course, if uh, um, through that, uh, um, well, uh, analyzing digital data, if we are suspicious, then we open the box or containers, but otherwise we let them come into or go out the countries. So uh, it is very important to have a very good relationship with business that are doing uh, digital, using digital means. 
And uh, this is where we use authorized economic operators. Customs look into business. Uh, usually they use information technology, whether their IT system is good and their record, compliance record is good, then we can provide them um, special status uh, called uh, AEO authorized economic operators. And the goods arriving from those AEOs, then we say, okay, uh, it is um, well, safe. And, and we don't uh, inspect too much. Sometimes we have to inspect whether the system is functioning or not, but uh, essentially we provide more facilitation. So um, under the digital era, uh, the customs and the business partnership has become all the more important to um, establish trust between customs and business. Uh, what are the challenges in the process of uh, building resilient global supply chains in post-COVID era? Well, um, COVID-19, three years ago, um, have imposed a huge pressure on customs because at that time, at the borders, um, movement of people, essentially no, but the movement of goods, they really needed. And uh, also, um, especially essential goods, such as medicines, vaccines, or medical goods, uh, you have to facilitate the movement. Therefore, um, we made sure that uh, um, customs remain agile and open. Uh, this is one thing. And another area is that the customs should employ more digital technology because at that time we talked about social distance. But uh, in customs context, uh, it is more about uh, um, using digitalization to avoid face-to-face -face, uh, um, interface between custom and business. Yeah. So um, this is what uh, we suggested. But uh, um, at the same time, we uh, had a meeting with the business, well, global business associations and big business to see what is the real problem. And quite often we identified it is not uh, custom per se, but uh, the lack of coordination at the borders is the, is the big challenge. So we tried to have better cooperation, and I talked to many international organizations in trade and transport so that we can encourage at the borders uh, nationally that uh, those coordination, uh, coordinated activities are there. So uh, in terms of uh, coordinated border management, uh, digitalization, and uh, uh, ensuring the smooth flow of essential goods, those are the areas uh, we uh, supported. And uh, after that, uh, um, because those pandemic uh, or natural disaster might uh, happen again, and uh, we might need to facilitate, uh, accelerate the movement of essential goods. Therefore, um, uh, we are now doing uh, um, resilience and also, um, well, uh, stress tests, uh, whether customer administration is prepared for that. So we provide more preparedness for such an uh, uh, incident. In many speeches, you mentioned borders divide, customs connect. Could you please elaborate more on this? Well, customs are uh, at the borders and uh, um, borders uh, make a difference. Difference in legal situation, difference in history, difference in administrative culture. So um, we need to, uh, two economies uh, in between the borders might make a difference. And uh, it would uh, um, really, um, well, um, uh, um, could be a, a barrier. So customs should be there and uh, try to make smooth movement of goods in spite of the difference. But for that, they have to make sure that compliance is there. So um, uh, connectivity at the borders is very important for any economies for development. And this is the essential role of customs. But I say um, connectivity is only for legitimate trade. And at the same time, we have to make sure that uh, illicit trade, we can control and stop those hazardous um, goods coming in or coming out. So this is how we see connectivity at borders, connect for legitimate trade and for the sound economic and social development of economies. What is your message to the customs organizations and the private sector in the region? 
Well, uh, this region and uh, Western Balkan region is rather specific uh, in that uh, it is in Europe, but uh, still not uh, part of the European Union. So what they need is um, first uh, um, you have to uh, improve your standards at a global level using WCO standards and uh, digitalize the use of technology and uh, um, get um, good human resources through training and other activities and uh, be prepared that uh, um, uh, you uh, are at the well, level playing field among six um, administrations so that uh, you can form a kind of uh, um, local uh, market and then connect it to EU and other big markets uh, um, outside uh, uh, this region. So um, the cooperation is important, but also constant improvement uh, using uh, um, global uh, best practices is uh, uh, necessary. And uh, especially in this uh, current environment, uh, that is the way forward. And when I talk to business uh, uh, in this region, that is what uh, they really uh, wish for. And the customer is essentially serving business for, to contribute to the economic competitiveness. So this is what I would like to um, convey as a message. Customer administration's main objective is to serve a um, well, better um, doing business environment. Uh, therefore, um, they have to do more and uh, in doing so, uh, it is very important to think about the region because nowadays uh, with this um, well, tra global trade environment, uh, really um, trade with neighboring countries and uh, um, having a bigger market uh, is really considered very important. And that is what uh, I see in many parts of the world. Therefore, um, how best customers can provide that kind of uh, um, basis. And also from business point of view, it is business that uh, um, you can do business uh, even if you are small and medium sized uh, enterprises by looking at the uh, region and uh, um, how you can do that. Uh, and uh, um, well, I talked about authorized economic operators, but uh, authorized economic operators, there could be, it's essentially a national program, but it could be mutually recognized among uh, neighboring countries. So that uh, um, the benefit that one uh, customer administration can give to that uh, um, business uh, through that mutual recognition, um, your neighboring countries can provide similar um, treatment, similar facilitation. Mm -hmm. So in that way, um, among uh, uh, the Western Balkan uh, countries, uh, you could uh, make, uh, um, well, uh, supply chain very much connected uh, with compliant traders so that uh, they are uh, confident in doing business all through and uh, then uh, customers is also very confident that uh, they are compliant traders, not uh, requiring too much control. And then uh, it could be uh, connected to the well, uh, external world uh, outside this region. And the uh, outside region could see very much confident because this is the global standards. And if uh, business and the customers uh, meet global standards, that will facilitate more of, for example, joining the European Union or uh, having more trade uh, with outside European um, economies. So um, I think that uh, um, business and the customers should work together to see uh, what kind of benefit they can get because ultimately this, this is for your state, for your country, that uh, economic development is a good thing through uh, more trade. So uh, that uh, custom business partnership, but uh, using, utilizing those global standards and thinking about more coordination uh, at the region and uh, going beyond, that is what I would like to recommend. There are many factors and impact global trade, including the pandemic, the conflicts, and so on. How does the World Customs Organization support countries in facing these challenges? Yes, um, 
well, uh, pandemic and also war in Ukraine and all those things uh, um, and uh, um, also technological decoupling between big uh, um, players, uh, all those uh, difficult environment is there. And what happens, um, I see, is that in the past it was globalization and uh, uh, global value chain and trying to use the most uh, um, cost-effective, efficient uh, um, economy to come up with uh, manufacturing in that country. But nowadays, uh, um, well, uh, policymakers are more careful that uh, not only just in time, but just in case is necessary. And this is what we call the, um, well, supply chain uh, realignment or supply chain resilience, so that uh, you need to diversify the source of procuring goods and you have to diversify uh, routing, uh, trade routing. So this is how we see uh, trade, um, well, supply chain resilience is necessary. And uh, in the end, again, um, looking at that and the regional importance, geographical importance that customers should continue to improve efficiency in preparation for that kind of new environment. Globally, we are seeing many investments facing in road and rail infrastructure. How are these new infrastructure roads going to affect global trade? Yes, uh, you are talking about hard infrastructure and which uh, surely um, facilitates trade. But um, at the same time, you need to think about the soft part of infrastructure. So whenever there is uh, um, investment in hard infrastructure, we also recommend that uh, you have to think about the soft part because, well, uh, state of the art infrastructure is there, but uh, if uh, the movement of goods stop at borders, that doesn't make sense. So um, how best uh, you, have, you, you can really make sure that uh, well, procedure part, that is soft infrastructure, uh, custom procedures or other border procedures uh, are mandated by other government agencies. This is the most important part. And uh, well, many countries are trying to improve their investment uh, climate or try to get more uh, FDIs. But um, in the end, it is quite often border procedure, uh, good infrastructure, but also Border procedure should be really facilitated, so both hard and soft infrastructure is necessary. And in that way, you can really get more um, better business environment or business climate doing business. How is the war in Ukraine impacting global trade and customs operations, having in mind that sanctions are being imposed of the movement of goods? Are alternative routes functional? And efficient. Yes, um, uh, first of all, um, war on um, Ukraine affected not only ordinary goods but uh, military goods, uh, firearms uh, and ammunition. And uh, customers should make sure that uh, those goods uh, not uh, are diverted to black market. So um, we try to give more training on, well, dual use goods, how they are really moving. And for ordinary goods, yes, it is true that uh, there are many, well, uh, diversified trade routes uh, coming up. And again, um, uh, with the sanctions, and uh, mm, there are always uh, circumvention um, attempts. So um, customer administrations, that, well, countries that are affected uh, in, by those sanctions should be very much careful about uh, um, how those uh, goods are going from where to where and uh, um, to make sure that uh, those goods remain legitimate and uh, um, go to the well expected uh, uh, destination. So uh, in that sense, yes, uh, we see um, more investment and more um, well uh, trend for uh, diverting the and the new routes are uh, being uh, um, proposed. Dr. Mikuria, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. This is my pleasure. Thank you very much.